Sorry, I always got something on my head, like a do rag and stuff like that. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like my hair looks crazy, but it looks fine. So I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, the video that you saw in the title. I'm pretty sure you saw it's the way of the warrior. Getting to that lately, I've been reading books like more often. And there's one book in particular that I want to talk about. And it's by Miyamoto Musashi. He's basically like a, uh, I probably messed up his name, but he's basically like a, he's a sam he was a samurai that lived in the 1500s or late 1500s around. There. He is undefeated basically. Like he started when he was like 12. He beat like a grown man and all that. Like his story is crazy. So he wrote two books to leave behind for his best student or his students. And one of them was the Dakota basically has principles and, um, like philosophies in a way of which like how to live life and stuff like that yeah like occasionally he would stay in the castle of like whoever was in charge at that time like they were cool but he would live out like in the wilderness long story short i've been reading his books and i want to apply those philosophies and principles to my life and you know see what it does i mean I'm pre it's like it pretty much falls in line with self-improvement but we out here so so the first principle so this first principle, accept everything as it is. It sounds almost like disrespectfully obvious, right? But there's, it's more deeper, which is obvious as well. But when you hear it, it's like, all right, yeah, obviously accept everything as it is. Like that's, you know, but I'm going to tell you right now, you know, people like to see the world through their perspective, their own perspective. And it's easy to have a bad day. It's easy, like not easy to have a bad day, but it's more like, all right, for example, you're, you got this first job, you know, it's, it's your first day, you're like ready to go, it's, it's what you always wanted. So you set out, you grab your stuff, head out early, and you know, you get in your car, you hit the road, and there's traffic, and you're stuck bumper to bumper. And you look on Google Maps, and you see that's like a 40 minute wait, you about to be like 30 minutes late for work. And you're just like, yo, like, you know, you're cursing, you're like, hurry up, you're honking the horn, maybe. But when you keep this principle in mind, it's basically like almost having mindfulness. There's nothing you can do in that situation. The world isn't always going to work to your favor. And most of the times it's stuff that is out of your control. So why stress over it? You know what I'm saying? You don't stress over things you can't control, basically. So it doesn't mean to like be a push over as well or like for example it's not or forget girls nah I'm not gonna approach girls anymore they they're always rejecting me it's not it's, that's not what it means Ex accept everything as it is it's more like see everything as it is know that the world is not in your favor all the time and so you do things that are in your control and go with that and if when, if you keep that in mind I'm I'm telling you like your your life will be somewhat easier to be honest because basically the principle of accept everything as it is does not mean settle it just means to view the world through a realistic lens you just gotta flow with whatever comes at you and act accordingly so principle number two is do not seek pleasure for its own sake and you know it's basically what it says there's no secret behind it it's that you know many people and this is a very difficult one too but many people they seek pleasure it's easy to overindulge in social media uh you know whacking it you know eating like unhealthy food and so all those things are superficial like it's it feels good when you're doing it and then you either beat yourself up afterwards like yo why did i do that is that the third or it's like you kind of like lose the feeling like it's like you're up here and then boom you're like instantly down here like when it's all said and done keeping this principle of my, uh in mind a true warrior doesn't indulge in the superficial pleasures of the world it's pleasure from his craft and from what he does and as a matter of fact he gets pleasure from being uncomfortable that's what a true warrior a true you know person that's on self-improvement should like strive for and me as myself i hold myself accountable because you know i'm like i said like i'm i have a weakness for sweets and i don't eat the healthiest uh i get caught up on social media you know what i'm saying it gets easier like i've been going to the gym for like a while now actually and i'm telling you it's not like an everyday struggle 
like eventually you start looking forward to going and it gets easy like it really does it gets easy not the workout per se but being consistent gets easier being consistent becomes your you like what you are so that's the second the third principle is do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling and this is uh, an important one especially for men weak men often create regrettable choices in the moment without self-control a true warrior is always calm and collected when it comes to making decisions no matter what pressure no matter what's going on they always keep a stoic mindset and frame never being swayed or unsure and if you are unsure become quiet and in stillness silence speaks so eventually you're gonna get it so it takes patience and calmness and it's also hard for me because it's not always sometimes you doubt yourself or you don't know if you're making the right decision or you're in a crossroad and you just wait it out until that best decision arrives there's like a phrase i don't know exactly how it goes but it's like quick money goes but like the vision is forever or something like that like uh, i don't know how the quote goes but i know basically the idea behind it is that it will be detrimental to your growth even as a youtuber like youtubers that kind of like sell themselves for sponsorships is like they make a a channel on one thing but then the sponsorship is like completely different or it's like goes against like what they're saying but like they do it for the money that's gonna that that ruins their like channel or not the channel but it ruins like their image almost and sometimes even the viewers like start hating them for like yo like what the hell like this dude just cares about this day and the third whatever he's trying to promote you know what i'm saying so there's many decisions you have to make in life it's not always easy decisions and pretty much meditate on it not actually like but think you know calm and collected and eventually an answer will come the fourth principle is think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world this one was like did not make any sense to me and this is not my words don't be like oh you're wise and like nah nah it's just a book that i was reading and i didn't even get it for a while until uh i read it but <clears throat> basically here's an example a weak man and i'm pretty sure everybody knows this hamza called hamza the youtuber if you guys don't know him check out his channel it's fire he, he calls them the jeffries anyways and the jeffries the weak men uh they think that there's all there is to know they know everything they almost cringe at you know self-improvement they're like why are you working out and um they're the ones writing in the comments well actually you know it's okay to play you know two hours of video games basically what hamza says like if you watch his video or if you watch his videos like you'll know what i mean if you don't but i feel like everybody knows this one person like actually i only play two video games and two hours of video games is okay and you know it's, it's always this is one of those it's one of those and basically um but a true warrior he is unattached to his opinion he has an opinion but he's open-minded and constantly testing that opinion sharing minds with other great minds just like his and as well as he keeps on growing keeps on extending his knowledge and the more he extends his knowledge the more he realizes that he doesn't know anything and honestly it might sound a little confusing but i was learning how to cut hair right and my cousin told me he said the day that you feel like you know all there is to cutting hair is the day you become a whack barber and i was like what like how does that make sense and then i realized like there's always something different and you can apply this to any craft it's not just cutting hair it's like the day you feel like you know all there is is like we are imperfect beings so how can we be perfect at something when we are imperfect ourselves there's no way so we should always be testing the limit you know what i'm saying or like keep on acquiring something and um that's pretty much that con like that whole thing and basically that's the whole building block to wisdom the fifth principle is 
be detached from desires lifelong. Usually, our desires are influenced by our surroundings, right? Our environment. I want to, or I believe so. And I, I say that because oftentimes, I'm going to give you an example. You see everybody getting, in, getting into a relationship, right? You see your friends, they're dating, it's cuffing season, and you're alone. And you start to feel like, dang, like I want a relationship. And you start to get influenced by that. And then you start trying to find a relationship because you want one, but not because you're ready for one. You know, everybody got a nice chain. I want that chain. So I'm going to get it and you're wasting money on something that's not even an asset, but a liability. And that's a whole separate video, but people buy buy a chain buy something something that they don't need but since everybody else has it, it's a desire and now they're owing mad money even like later on and they're broke and they can't do anything so never chase a desire because that's detrimental and i'm not saying don't get that chain or don't get into that relationship but do it when you can not because you want to and it's because of desire and everybody else is doing it because then you're doing it for the wrong reasons now principle number six is do not regret what you have done and when i say this i don't want to be cliche and be like oh live life with no regrets like yes but i also want to say is that don't regret things that you did or didn't do and don't let people make you feel bad for things that you did or didn't do. When you're on a freeway, you don't just up and hit reverse. One, it probably won't work. And two, you mess up your car. Oh, and three, if you do go reverse, like you're gonna crash. And it's the same thing with life. Don't look backwards in the past, because life is always moving forward and you're just gonna get left behind and if anybody tries to you know i have been, i've had people like come up to me and tell me like oh like you know my mom is judging me for you know this and that or whatever but i'm over it. I'm gonna, like you know stuff like that or friends like you know they'll go against other friends and be like oh but you did you, you used to be like this stuff like that or you changed like nah don't don't make don't try to make me feel bad for something that was back then. They're still living back there, so you leave them back there. Leave them back there, and you keep ascending past them because that's where it's that's where they're always gonna be. is a feeling that was given to us it's a human emotion and no matter what anybody says I, I refuse to believe that nobody has ever been jealous in their life whether if it was on a big scale or a, the tiniest scale the size of a crumb you have been jealous one point in your life it doesn't have to often people think like jealousy is like you're hating on something or you're like 
Abel and Cain situation. Like, it's not like that. Like, there's times where maybe, you know, you might have had an opportunity and somebody else got it and you felt like you deserved it. With this principle in mind, we are humans. We do get jealous. It's gonna happen. It's what we do that determines whether who we are is what we do with that emotion. Oh, true warrior, he might feel like, he might take that as a hit, like, all right, I felt like I worked hard, but he deserves it. He's probably been putting hours that I haven't seen. He's probably been doing extra stuff that I haven't been doing. And as a matter of fact, let me go talk to him and be like, yo, what did you do? How did you get that? Because, you know, I felt like I've been working hard, but I want to know how you got it so I could be like that. That takes humility and strength. And that's like really dope if you could do that. Because in this world, not many people can. And often are bitter about it. Or in, in a relationship standpoint, like yes, we get jealous, but it should be controlled and there should be trust there. And if there isn't trust there, then you shouldn't be doing it. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for that principle. Principle number eight is never let yourself be saddened by a separation. Mind you, some might be like, oh, that's easy to say, you know, mind you, this man, he had an adopted son that he loved. And his son ended up becoming a samurai, I think. Quote me if I'm wrong. Uh, I might be wrong, so if I am, like, let me know. But he had an adopted son, and his son became a samurai, and I think his son worked for the Shogun. But the Shogun ended up getting, like, overruled or, uh, I mean, not over overthrown or something like that, or, like, died. And it was, like, a different, like, person that came out on top, and so... Since he was loyal to the Shogun, I think his uh, adopted son like committed seppuku, which is like you know they stabbed this off like in the stomach and like you know. So mind you, this is a this is the principle that came from him. So basically, the idea of never let yourself be saddened by a separation is that it's kind of almost similar to I think the first principle. Yeah, accept everything as it is. It's pretty much that life comes and goes, things die and are born. Being saddened by a separation and staying low won't do anything for you because you're staying in that like low energy, that sadness instead of moving forward. That thing is gone or that thing is not there, it left or whatever it is. <clears throat> but is what you do and how you share those memories and how you keep on moving forward. Whether if it's a relationship ending, somebody left you or parents or money, you lost your money or your dog died, you know, stuff like that. Keep growing and keep moving forward. Cause that's just how life is. And it's, and it's very hard, especially when it comes to this, it's very hard. At least for me, I would believe so. Cause it's like, nobody wants like a death to happen or they lose everything or you know somebody leaves nobody wants that that's that's all like unfortunate events kind of understand at least have it in the back of your mind that it's okay to mourn it's okay to feel bad and i think Medea said something or not Medea, you know obviously she's not real but in one of the tyler perry movies she said something like this or he said something like this you know like it's all right cry like let it all out the only problem is staying that way staying like you know, depressed and stuff like that. Like, you gotta keep on going on with your life. And that's so true. And that's pretty much what that principle is. Principle number nine is resentment and complaints are appropriate neither for yourself nor others. And this is a good one. I actually like this because it's easy to, and I find myself doing this too, it's easy to complain about a situation or about people and it's a lot harder to give compliments nowadays it's rare that somebody receives compliments that's keeping you behind honestly and you won't grow much it's like a it's like a tree that is not receiving that much water they kind of like just stop it's like them or like a little bit of water and they're just like 
planted and they're like they don't really grow that much they just kind of stay there i don't know much about planting but that's the image i'm gonna give you it's like the same thing and it's hard because sometimes people do you wrong and you want to have that resentment or sometimes something happens to you and you want to complain about it but how can you turn that into something positive or how can you use that as motivation to fuel you like you could forgive but just don't forget you know what i'm saying and keep going and you know it's hard because i felt resentment i felt resentment before and if again if any if you say you haven't then you're either too young haven't experienced life and you're just locked in a box or you're lying but i felt resentment before and many times actually but it's what you do with it and it's how you use it to fuel you if you let it keep you down then that's where you're gonna stay if you use it to fuel you to keep growing and then you forgive eventually and all that stuff like that then you'll be unstoppable and you leave that behind because you have a new life you're upgraded you know what i'm saying so that's that Principle number 10, do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. This is a hard one because everybody wants to have love, right? This feeling is actually sometimes out of a selfish desire instead of wanting to serve another person. Honestly, I think if you're on self-improvement, honestly, I would say to avoid it. And I'm not saying avoid love altogether. Or, you know, if something happens, then it happens. But oftentimes I see many men or women they're on self-improvement they're going to the gym they're doing this that and the third and then when they get into a relationship they start slacking and I, i'm saying this because it's happened to me and not only me i've seen it i've seen some of my friends go to the gym and they used to have abs and then they get into a relationship and they're chubby and it's like oh yeah he got taken care of like no because now they're not together anymore and he's still chubby and then when he tries to get with somebody else or be with somebody else that he actually has feelings for they don't want him. That's something you should be cautious of. And it should only be done when the time is right and you're ready and that could be a great distraction, so be careful. And honestly, anything that's a distraction you should avoid. And also, the weaker guys that be on the hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or everybody does it, it's fine. Like, no, we're not trying to be like everybody. We're trying to be exceptional. We're trying to be that top 1% or top 20%. So why are you trying to be like everybody else, but then you want to go be on self-improvement, you want to do this and that, and you want to be a millionaire, NFL player, or all this stuff. But you're doing what everybody else is doing? Like, you got to be the weird person. Separate yourself, man. And find people that are like you. And there's not many like you. Like, summer, it's almost been a year since I've been on self-improvement. And it's had its ups and downs. And honestly, from there to now, like I've been lonely. Like it's been a lonely road. And I have like a friend or a couple that are on it too. You can't walk on that path together. It's like something you got to do on your own. There's friends that sometimes my friends ask me to hang out and I can't. It's better to have company and you know, have fun and go out there. That's what you want, but I'm working towards something. And my mom was telling me about in the car like casual conversation like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna apply at this place and stuff like that and in my mind i'm just thinking like you shouldn't even have to be applying for jobs you shouldn't even have to be working like i wish i could like ease that burden from your mind i didn't tell her that but i just thought it and um yeah so you don't want to be like everybody else i went off on a tangent but yeah Principle 11 is, in all things, have no preference. Now, this is kind of a doesn't really make sense type of principle in a way, because it's kind of a little too broad, but it's in all things. So, example, when we're little, many times we think we don't like something. In our whole lives, we grow up like, probably until you're like a teenager, you think you don't like something to eat. 
mine was beans i used to think i didn't like beans like for a while until like i got like i was like 10 i mean i was still little but like that whole time or like i was like 13 around there the whole time i thought i didn't like beans until i ate it and beans was actually pretty fire like rice and beans and stuff that's that was like i was like okay this is pretty good it adds like you know whatever um political matters whether you should do this or do that know this know that so i have no no preference when it comes to food because you know you might like something when it comes to people because you never know the person the or the type of people you didn't really mess with might surprise you they might be like the coolest people peeper they might be the coolest people you know how many times i've gotten like yo I, like i didn't like you at first i thought you were like an f boy or i thought you were um like i thought you were rude or mean like you just got a mean face and stuff and they meet me and i'm like goofy as hell it's never never make something up in your head or like try not to and it's not like a don't judge type of thing even though you shouldn't do that either but it's more like a of a um have an open mind to everything even if it's a belief that you have have an open mind because you might be surprised it's principle 12 be indifferent to where you live now this is a good one because especially now on social media you see people traveling and uh you see people doing spontaneous things like oh i sold my house and moved to new york or something, something like that but honestly um and that's no that's no knock to them that's no disrespect to them like if, if it works for them cool but honestly this is not for everyone i think that no matter where you go your problems are not going to leave you and that's the whole point of this principle is that be indifferent to where you live because no matter where you go will it really change anything and that's the same to young young people that want to move out and i often get this question like why don't you move out and it's because i don't need to why would i move out honestly the only reason why young men want to move out is to be beating cheeks in private and that's the like the dumbest reason why would i waste money paying rent and having to deal with that like anxiety and stuff like that when i could live here for free and still do what i've been doing you know what i'm saying so eventually i will but as of right now, like I'm chilling. This is principle 13. Do not pursue the taste of good food, right? Right? Yeah, the taste of good food. This is a hard one. I think this is the hardest one for me because I love sweets. Like I love, and I love like, like I love eating like Chinese food and noodles and, you know, carby, carby food and what else like cheesecake oh my gosh cheesecake pumpkin pie like I love chips ahoy i love all that but in a survival like almost animalistic standpoint we don't eat food to taste good and to enjoy it we eat food to maintain us keep like have our nutrients and be healthy and i'm not saying like eat salads the rest of your life like honestly that's like kind of sad like who wants to eat salads like if you don't like salads like like i like salads but i can't eat that every day like i just can't like if you can kudos to you but me i can't do that if you like cookies find a healthy replacement something that's similar but maybe a lot less calories or more nutritious you know stuff like that i was watching youtube video and there was a man that he was like 300 pounds and he said but he lost like he lost weight like he was like he ended up like filling up and like losing all that weight and he was like swole and he said well he, he started with something small and it was not drinking soda because he said he would go through like a whole pack in like a matter of like hours i think it was or a day he would go through like a whole pack and that's already like thousands and thousands of calories but instead he switched it out with juice which is not really that healthy as well but i'm sure it's less calories or it was like um like flavored water i think it was which is kind of like juice but like Less way less calories and so he cut that and he like he started losing weight just by doing that he didn't work out he didn't do nothing active yet he did that and 
you know what I'm saying? So if if you have a trouble, like if you have trouble with this and you're on self improvement and you wanna lose weight or whatever, like yes, there's times where you don't wanna overindulge in good food and there's times where you might have to eat something like that's like uh, like one, it's all worth it in the end. And two, find a healthy replacement. Do not hold on to possessions you no longer need. This is principle 14. And that idea is pretty much the things that you own end up owning you. And that's true with a lot of things. A lot of people, they buy cars and they make that their whole life. And then they have like no money, they're broke. Or a lot of people spend unnecessary money on certain things the new iPhone or the new and that's like their life people will slave their whole life away literally like hate their job to like the worst scenario but it's like oh but I gotta pay off my my, my Porsche it's like why 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 are you doing that now you like it's like you basically sold your soul to a job that you don't like for that it's like why like literally and that's probably an extreme example, but it's like when you die, you're not taking that with you. Or if you die, God, God, you know, God forbid, I don't want to wish nothing on nobody, but you can't take that with you. And you should appreciate what you have and know that many people don't even have that. Appreciation goes a long way. Like, look, look at my phone. I have an iPhone 8. What is it like the 13 Pro Max, whatever came out? Everybody's always making jokes like, yo, upgrade or whatever. And I might have to soon because I think, like, I have 4G. Everybody's using 5G or whatever. And, um, I think they're going to, like, cut off 4G eventually or something like that. I don't know. But I'm going to use this until it stops working. Like, I'm going to, even even if I do upgrade, I'm still going to use this. Maybe just to record or anything because it's like, and if I upgrade, it's not going to be nothing crazy. Because, like, why do I got... Why do I gotta spend like mad money on a on a phone that's just a phone? Like I use it as a tool. Like I'm not even on social media anymore. Like I I post it. Look, yo, actually I, I wanna. Sh it's not gonna focus. But anyways, it says it says like four hours. It says four hours. Like four hours and one minute. But I don't know why it's not focusing. Last week, week's average. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's twelve hours. Last week was 12 hours. That's literally like from, like it's a whole day, that's a whole day. And it's like, oh yeah, 24 hours, but you're not up for the other 24 hours. So that means I've been literally using my phone the whole day, like literally the whole day. From like awake to asleep. I deleted Instagram, I deleted Snapchat. I deleted YouTube and it's four hours you know what I'm saying and I think the weekly the weekly av the weekly average so far is like two hours it's a 64% less from last week that's more than half and so that's the whole idea is basically don't stay attached to stuff that you don't need and I do hop on social media to post and I instantly delete it and sometimes I'll catch myself like tapping like on one person's story and then I'll tap again and I'm like nah Boom, once I do that, I delete it. Don't let your stuff own you. And definitely don't put yourself in a position to where you sign your life away. Or you're young, you're like 19, 18, 17, to where you sign your life away. Or you're young, you're like 19, 18, 17. And you move out just to move out. And now you're slaving yourself away at a job that you hate and that you got to stay at because you have to pay rent and bills. Now, if you have to, if you're in a situation where it's like toxic and you know this down the third, then fair enough. But if not, and you're just doing it to move out or just to beat cheeks in private or whatever, it's like, or you buy a new car and you're slaving yourself away at a job, you hate your job. Now you got to stay there and pay the rest of your car off for like, six years four years why principle 15 i gotta read it because like my phone is right there and i like forget so do not act 
following customary beliefs don't be normal especially with social media and media and the news and nowadays it's so hard because you're either a weirdo or you're misogynistic or beliefs or things that you haven't even tested find your own truth realize your own things and that's what anything and that's not with just ideals that people have like or the media has but it's also with stuff like you know if you're working out and something works for you and then somebody else comes and it's like oh well scientifically you're not supposed to be doing that way because this and the third like yo get out of here or oh well that's not true because you know the science of is the jeffries the jeffries the ones that hamza mentions in his videos is the, is the little jeffries that well you know technically like yo get out of here yo like i don't care like you're really wasting time commenting like stupid like irrelevant information like all right i'm gonna keep on doing it my way because it works but if it ain't broke don't fix it simple exactly like that so customer beliefs find your own truths and if some if there's a group of people that have a certain idea and it contrasts with yours don't conform if they're like oh uh you like this person right or you voted for this person right or you believe in this right like don't don't be don't be pressured to be like oh yeah <laughs> to fit in because it takes somebody strong to be like like no not really this is principle 16 it says do not collect weapons or practice weapons beyond what is useful and as a martial artist this is true i was an amateur boxer and that is useful but now as a martial artist you should practice a lot of different martial arts if you guys seen kanichi the mightiest disciple you should definitely watch it that's like a dope anime it's like a little older but it's dope but anyways as a martial artist yes you should well even not even as a martial artist if you're a regular person you should definitely learn how to defend yourself because anything could happen and you should join a club and it's you know and you'll be fit so it's like five birds in one stone because you get a lot of benefits from it you get friends that like the same things you like you get uh a physique you get um you get training you know how to defend yourself you become more confident so it's like you should learn how to defend yourself for sure and um do not collect weapons that are beyond what is useful so as a martial artist oftentimes people join martial arts club that sucks and this happened to me i joined the boxing club i had a coach he was like a father to me in new mexico because i used to live in new mexico and like, yo, we, we went crazy. Like, I was nice. Like, we went crazy. And I'm still nice. But I came to Florida. And it was like a little private gym, which was kind of a red flag. And he was like, oh, I don't really take amateur boxers. But, you know, amateur doesn't mean like beginner or like that you suck. It just means like, it's like the young, like the young, uh, it's not like normal sports where it's like basketball and you got high school and then you got like college and then you got like overseas and then you got pro nba right it's not like that it's amateurs you could be 30 years old and still be an amateur or you could have professionals you could be like 17 out of mexico and be a pro boxer maybe not on tv and televised but you can be a pro boxer and get paid basically it's like you're getting paid for it and you're like in front of a bigger crowd and arena and stuff and like there's different regulations i guess like i know the reps have to be anyways i'm going off on a tangent doesn't matter practice what is useful i find people that they practice trash like they go to a boxing gym but they're not really learning because the coach sucks or they go to a martial arts and the martial arts is probably like very old and not applicable to what is useful now or what's going on now or oh, i've seen tiktoks where it's like oh if somebody has a gun you go like that's not gonna work you're gonna get shot and um do not hang on to old philosophies or old beliefs that are no longer useful now um my coach sucked long story short i had to go to another gym and that gym was actually really good the second gym that i went to they actually had people that wanted to train but then i moved and the gym ended up being like 40 minutes away drive and so i kind of like stopped boxing until i went back to new mexico like two years ago and i started boxing and got two fights and i won both because you know i'm nice like that but um yeah and so practice what is useful discard what is not 
Bruce Lee said it the best. There you go. I'm gonna keep this one short. Principle 17 is do not fear death. And this is a time of samurai where they often visualize themselves dying in battle so they could get over the fear. They wouldn't meditate and just imagine themselves dying. I think. I might be dragging it, I might be like giving you false information, but that's what I've heard. And so, and I think this is true to an extent, like you shouldn't fear death uh, because everybody dies or whatever like that. But um, oftentimes I think people don't fear like death, they fear the memories that they're leaving behind, they fear the people that they're leaving behind. Not that they fear them, but it's like they don't want to let it go, you know? And that's pretty much that. It's like, there's really not much to say about that. So, principle 18. It says, uh, do not seek to possess either goods or fiefs, fiefs, fiefs for your old age. I wrote it down in my notes, so it's like, like you know. But explaining this, we spend our time thinking way deep into the future. Like, oh, I'm going to just do this for 40 years and then I'll enjoy my retirement. And then 40 years comes, you don't enjoy your youth at all because you slaved yourself away, hoping that retirement would be nice. And then you get ill, you get old and weak, or you just realize that you wasted all that time when you could have been enjoying it, but you slaved it for a job, hoping that retirement would be nice but it's not as nice as you thought it would be. I think that this is very important for people to realize is that, you know, um, especially the road that the school system wants you to fall under. It's like you go to school, you go to college, you graduate, you get a degree, you slave, you work. I don't wanna say it like that because people they, people, they want to be doctors and they wanna be lawyers and that's fine. But if you're going to college just because you want to follow the beliefs of the people, don't go. And um, what I'm saying is basically that you do this, you know, you get a job and, you know, you retire, you work your whole life and then you retire. It's like, that's a sad existence. I think that's a sad existence for me. Unless you love what you do, unless you love being a doctor and that's what you always wanted to be, or you love being an astronaut, or you love doing this and that's what you always wanted to be, that's fine. But I mean those for the people that just went to college because that's what the parents expected of them or that's what the school system expected of them. <laughs> they get a job that has nothing to do with their degree or does, but it's not really like what they aspired to do. And then they like finish, they start working, they hope retirement, they get a nice car, a nice house, and they just relax. That's lame. Like, I want to enjoy myself now. I don't want to slave away from I had a job my whole life and wait till I'm 60, 50 to enjoy my life. That's a whole half of my existence gone, working. But that's pretty much what it is. Do not focus too much in the future because you'll sacrifice your existence now. Don't spend your time thinking about the past because you'll sacrifice your future. And that's what it is. So principle, principle 19 is respect your belief without counting on the help, whether that's manifestation, the universe, God, Buddha, whatever it is. And sometimes having faith goes a long way. And like, yeah, you could try to manifest being rich or pray and ask for this and or not even just being rich you could pray and ask for something you can man try to manifest something but honestly if you're just like all right i'm just gonna ask for this and then it just comes to me i sit back like nah man you gotta you gotta at least try at least try to put an effort and it'll come to you that's the whole point of the process that's what makes you stronger and it's like oh well then i'm just I'm just getting it myself. Like, no, not really. Because, one, you have faith that is coming to you. And that's what keeps you motivated. 
and it's like, oh, well, I just get motivation out of it. No, because it could come to you way faster. Or there could be steps in your way that makes you stronger, that those whatever you believe in threw in your way to make you stronger, to have you achieve that. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into that one too much because it's a little like, it's kind of like whatever you believe in is, you know? But yeah, this one is like one of the most imprint, like important principles to me. And it's, you, you may abandon your own body, but you must preserve your honor. And like, I know I sound like Zuko, like my honor, my honor, but let me explain. Many people, they sell themselves out, men and women, and guys, they sell themselves out, they kiss ass or they, to get a certain position or they do grimy stuff to get on top or they make an appearance and it's not just guys girls do this too they make an appearance too of something that they're not and seeing and like if that's what you really love to do like that's fine but do you really like that like life and selling yourself out and sell, selling an over sexual life and your body and all this stuff and i'm a guy so like you know people are like oh we should not talk about my body my body right i guess yeah, fair. but it's like If your parents or your grandparents or would you share that with them? Like don't I always tell my siblings this and it's don't do something that you would be ashamed to tell your parents. But don't do something that you would be ashamed to show a higher power. to like kind of make but if you guys like this type of stuff let me know i might like branch out and kind of make like different stuff than this self-improvement will always be it but i i grind off of the energy you guys give me so let me know what i should do and we're gonna keep it moving please love and support love to you guys i appreciate you guys you know we've been growing got the um We've been we've been growing and I'm happy because 
never would have thought that this is what I was going to do. And I'm happy with it. And even if I didn't have a big audience, and I still don't, but to me, this is the audience. And this is like the real people that I have. And it's all love. Because it might not seem like much, but it's a lot to me. 40 people, that's like two classrooms. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I hope we just keep on going up from here. But anyways, I've been talking too much. Like, subscribe, share, uh, shout out, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Peace.